Pewter City, a perfect first stop for Pokemon trainers, an easy-going retirement location for the elderly, and a safe haven for the voluntarily blind. But what's really going on underneath the surface of this perfect city? Does this butterfly have a job? Does this child have a job? Well, that's what we're going to find out with today's unemployment survey, the third episode of our series on Kanto in Pokemon, where we are going to find out how the local economy is really doing. All right, if you're unfamiliar with the methodology here, let me just tell you quick how we're, how this is gonna work. There's only one way to get a sense of how local economy is doing it, and that is by direct survey. So we're gonna survey every single member of the population of Pewter City, including this old woman, and determine whether they are employed or not, and then add them all up at the end and uh, calculate the city's unemployment rate. Now let's start at the bottom and we'll work our way up here, shall we? Hello, sir. Are you employed? There aren't many serious Pokemon trainers here in Pewter City. They're all bud catchers and the like, you know, hobbyists. I don't know, if you're 20 years old and you're dressed like you're on Family Feud and all you're doing is complaining about how people aren't serious enough at Pokemon training, that sounds like unemployed behavior to me. This lady is old and she's also giving you me advice about money. You know who does that? People who don't have jobs because they're old and retired because their bodies are uh, create pain when they try to do labor. Now over here we have, uh, th these are what are called master trainers. In the last episode of the series, we determined that master trainers are employed by some wider entity. We decided not to include them in the population count of the cities, so this person doesn't count. Oh, look at this. First of all, these people are definitely garden watchers. Psst, do you know what I'm doing? I uh, don't know what you're doing. I assume working because you're in a work uniform. I'm spraying lure around to get wild Pokemon to come visit my flower beds. Okay. That's the opposite of what we do, actually. It's interesting. How do you know the Caterpie's not going to eat your flowers? You're doing work. You're dressed in a work uniform. This is employment. Thank you so much. What about you? Are you doing work? You're wearing the same uniform. Hello, ch somewhat childlike man. Did you check out the museum? I did not. Right here we've got a nerdy kid who loves the museum. Kind of seems like a kid, right? Pants are too high. Hoodie is ugly. No adult with a job is going to be talking about museums. I promise you that. This person's probably hiking, passing through. You got hiking hat, hiking bag, hiking stick. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with uh, vacationing. Doesn't count. Hello, little child. You don't have a job. How does that feel, little child? Bet it feels good. Ah, a woman. Now that is a quote from Mulan. I'm not just pointing out that she's a woman because I'm a weirdo. Okay, that is a reference to Mulan. When they pull off her shirt and they see her t that guy goes, a woman. You know? That's what happened. That's what happened. I didn't make the movie, it's a Disney movie, so it can't be problematic, probably. Don't don't talk about Pocahontas, please. Okay, do you think you could keep an eye on Slowpoke? She wants me to babysit her Slowpoke. Sure, let's see what happens. Thank you for keeping an eye on Slowpoke. She gave me a big pearl. Okay, that's a clue into either her wealth. That's her clue into her wealth, I feel like. Only someone who's exorbitantly wealthy would be giving away pearls. And if she's hanging out in a park all day, with pockets full of pearls. There's two options. She's either, <gasps> she might be a museum thief. She walks towards the museum and then comes back and gives me diamonds and pearls. And this is like her alibi that she sits in the park all day. Holy shit. Which means really the only conclusion we can draw is that she's employed because she's gotta be selling those pearls for money, right? And if you make money, you're employed. Okay, I think that's everyone standing around outside. So now let's start going in the buildings. We're gonna start with the easy ones. So the, well, the hospital and the Pokemart, that'll be a lot of employment there. Starting with the hospital, number one, master trainer doesn't count. Number two, old man. The Pewter City Crunchies are $500. Oh, he's selling Pewter City Crunchies in, this, in the hospital for some reason. That seems weird, but it, it's a job. <laughs> Hello, are you an adult? That's really the question here. Yeah, she seems like a student or something, like waiting patiently with good posture in the hospital, you know? She's not tired enough to be have a job, so she's probably just young. And then there's this guy. Says, what, Team Rocket's on Mount Moon? I'm on the phone, Scram. He's not on the phone. The only way he's on the phone is if he has one of those Bluetooth earpieces. And I will say, if you've got a suitcase, you're dressed like that, and you're on a Bluetooth earpiece, you probably have a job, even though you could be retired. Maybe he's like a police commissioner, doesn't matter. He's probably employed. And of course we got the nurse. And the Pokemon doesn't count. 
Next up, the Poke Mart. Number one, the hottest man around. Anytime I see a guy like this, boy, oh boy, I, I, I get all bricked up, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, he's employed. Now we got this Sonic the Hedgehog looking little kid. A shady old guy sucking me into buying this weird Pokemon. I've been there. Can't help you with that. Uh, and you also don't have a job and you're a kid. And then we got this guy. The last guy we saw that looked like this we said was um, below working age. I think I feel the same about this guy. He's looking at like Gatorades and stuff in the local convenience store. So probably doesn't count. 17 year old energy, you know. Now we've got to look at the Pokemon Gym. This is going to be a good one too. The Pokemon Gym is filled with employment. Number one, you've got the referee. Thank you. Every city employs a referee, which is great. Great for... Uh, Great for the economy. And then we got two Pokemon trainers who are definitely children. And as much as I hate to admit it, there have been a lot of arguments in the comments about how sometimes kids can have jobs and should count as employed. Basically the argument is, if we're counting criminals as employed, even though they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing, they still have to pay taxes on that income. I don't know if that's actually true, like with the uh, the Internal Revenue Service in the United States. Or like if you're a kid and you get paid, could you go to prison? You know, you're whoever employed you would go to prison for employing you as child labor or whatever. But could you go to prison as a, like, could you be in juvie for tax evasion? I think is what I'm getting at. Whoa, this is weird since you are a child. I'm suddenly getting in different energy from Brock. Uh, I'm not gonna think too much about that. We're just gonna let it go. And I'm gonna say these are children so they don't count. He's probably not paying them to be honest. Let's be real. Given the type of guy we know he is, Jesus. Brock says, that's the promise of my rock hard will. Oh my gosh, this is just getting worse and worse. As much as I hate to admit it, Brock, he's uh he's employed, unfortunately. With those three places out of the way, next up, we're gonna take a look inside of everybody's house. This is always fun because it's a lot of uh, we get to see the family dynamics of a space, you know? Now this is uh this is what I call a family. Grandpa's taking care of the food and the dishes, probably retired. Then we got a kid with a, a heck of a look on his face. And then they've got uh, one of these master trainers hanging out in their house, which feels a little bit like a Third Amendment violation kind of situation, but uh, you know, this isn't America, so they can do what they want. We got another home right here. This might be the only other one. Classic family dynamic. We got uh, nice dad energy right here. The dad is dressed like he has a job. He's got a nice house, but based on the fact that he's home helping the kid, I'm guessing he's got a spouse of some kind. Maybe it's that lady who's stealing from the museum. Either way, he doesn't count. He's working hard, but he's not employed. That's it for domiciles, which means there's only one more big place in Pewter City, the Pewter Museum of Science. Hopefully it's also a museum of employment, am I right? Hello, sir, how do you like working at the museum? Thank you for being employed. Anybody else in here? Let's see, well, we got a master trainer, doesn't count. Another old guy, I should be grateful for my long life, I agree. Up here we have another employed scientist slash tour guide. Thank you, sir. Another master trainer, another Sonic the Hedgehog kid. What do we have here? A big brother and his little sister, perhaps? Oh, daddy, I'm sorry. It's a father and daughter combo. Okay, so father's taking his kid to the museum. That's wonderful and sweet. Hard to tell if he's employed, but we know he's certainly not unemployed, so we're gonna say not applicable. And then over here, another old guy. Big, big day for old guys. It must be a Geriatrics Association uh, discount day. It has been decades since mankind stood on the moon and now we're following the dream of standing on Mars. News about space makes me so excited. Isn't that sweet? They've even got some Big Bang propaganda on the wall. And then in the last room, look at this. Three more scientists. You gotta love it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you for your service to the economy and scientific research or whatever. Now there's one more place we have to check and that is uh, just on the outskirts of the city. We don't go too far, but we wanna see, like with this little kid, if there's anyone a little further out who might uh, qualify as employed in uh, Pewter City. Little kid, little kid, master trainer, and oh my God, would you look at this? At the end of the trail is a Pokemon Center. Now there's no other city around here that this Pokemon Center would fall under in terms of jurisdiction. So I think it's fair of me to include it in the survey. If you disagree, you can let me know in the comments, but that is what I'm gonna do. However, the difference is I'm gonna assume that all the people in here, especially all these um, parentless children are uh, not actually from Pewter City. I'm gonna assume they're stopping here on their way elsewhere, which I think is fair. However, I will include 
the nurse as employed in Pewter City. And with that, we've come to the end of our survey of the fine citizens of Pewter City. So all that's left to do is to send that data off to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, synthesize it, write the report, and uh, give you the information via a press conference. That press conference will begin in three, two, one, press con Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, another press conference uh, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, this time regarding the uh, employment situation in a city called Pewter City in Canto. Just in case you're not aware, this is the third in a series of what will be maybe nine or ten surveys that will allow us to uh, figure out the unemployment rate of the entire region. So we'll be doing those periodically over the coming months, uh, and we'll do a summary at the end. But this is the third one. So Without further ado, let's begin. <clears throat> Total surface payroll employment of uh, Pewter City, excuse me, is at 16 persons and unemployment is at 5.8%. Pewter City is a small to medium sized city in the Canto region with a population of 44. Nested in between the dense Viridian forest to the south and Mount Moon to the east, Pewter City has become a common stopover point for tourists as they make their way to or from the larger cities in the east on foot. The city features amenities that seem typical of Canto. You've got free and accessible healthcare, affordable shops, and a central uh, gym that draws in people participating in the countrywide sport of Pokemon fighting. If you need more context on that, uh, if you're not sure, if you've never heard of Pokemon fighting, uh, you can watch our previous videos. We'll get into that a little bit. Uh, where Pewter City differs from the other cities we've done is it has uh, another draw. It has a large natural history museum on the north side of the city, uh, which seeks to take advantage of this high Passover rate, uh, siphoning off a bit more from the people before they move and spend their money elsewhere. Um, it's unclear how successful this attempt has been. Uh, you know, it's a lot of towns will try to get sort of tourist traps going and not have a lot of success And this might be what's happening here because most of the people we surveyed in and around the museum seem to be locals It's a bunch of old guys. Excuse me. Uh, it's a bunch of Elderly uh, and the admission price in the museum was less than half of the cost of buying a bag of snacks that we bought at the local uh, Hospital from a guy in the corner. So uh, that doesn't you know, it doesn't bode well uh, You can make the argument that it's maybe an educational institution. I suppose but um, just based on everything else, it seems like they're trying to make some money and maybe not having great success. So anyway, the bigger spending in Pewter City comes from those aforementioned Pokemon trainers. Both the local population and the people passing through uh, seem completely uninterested in engaging with anything other than the nationwide blood sport monopoly to the point that nobody in the city seems interested at all in looking more closely into the fact that the fighting dojo of the city is staffed entirely by seven or eight year olds under the tutelage of a 30 to 35 year old man. <clears throat> now, before you get on your high horse and say, well, that's horrible, it would never happen here, for a parallel, consider uh, high school and college sports in the United States, which are often similarly exploitative and, and uh, monetarily inoculated from sort of ethical scrutiny. Uh, you know, so. Something to look into. I just work for the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That's not really my job. You know, maybe I'll call the Bureau of Sports Ethics and we'll do a survey with them later. Uh, economically, though, Pewter City isn't in any real danger. There's only a single person that the Bureau considered unemployed, a healthy population of retirees, and plenty of children, all of which are signs that it's a desirable place to live and work and even a place where you could spend decades building a life and ultimately retire. 5.8% puts Pewter City at the top of our list right next to Viridian City, indicating that for whatever issues it may have culturally, Canto seems to be doing quite well economically. So that's, uh, that's Pewter City, an interesting place. And maybe if we create enough of an uproar, we can look into that guy, Brock. Now, another thing uh, we can do is we can Post a comment in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video because uh, I want to know if I'm making what you want to see because that's what I want to do because I'm here to serve you. Of course, you can support me on Patreon if you want to see more videos from me. Watch another one of my videos right after this. That's very helpful to me. And finally, guess what? I make a lot of music in my free time and I use that music in all my videos. So today, please enjoy the song and I will see you next time. Adios. <laughs>